let me know. Hi there, uh, Stephanie. Just let me know if you can hear me. Awesome. Great stuff. Okay, we've got a, a few more joining us. Great. Guys, I know this session is uh, sort of on the later side, um, but I just want to quickly check in with you and uh, check where you are. I know all of you guys are pretty much old hands at this, so it's not really a question of uh, are you studying? It's not really a question of um, whether you're preparing for exam. It's really a question of what else do you need uh, from me uh, to to prepare for the exam. So you just, you need to let me know. You can either let me know now or in the chat while we're having this evening session. So as introduction for this evening, I'm going to just review where we should be uh, in terms of the course. And then also I am going to revisit the assignment one again and then rework and rechat through it again. So the first, I know the first session, I went through it extensively. So this evening will be a good opportunity maybe uh, for Q&A, uh, and you can then let me know what it, uh, what it sounds like, uh, or not sounds like, if there's any specific questions you have on the assignment. But I will also work through each question. So uh, the first thing that I want to do, so just a bit of a review, where are we? So a few uh, housekeeping things. Uh, I, I did send you the dates for the NSS. The NSS is National Support Session. So the first one will be on the 10th. Wednesday the 10th, so keep an eye out on that. I did post the link for you uh, and I will send you another reminder. The ICE tasks are all there. They're available for you to be completed. Uh, can I just get the indication from you guys whether you have started on the ICE tasks or how are you finding the ICE tasks? So you can give me a number. One, they are easy or five, they sort of, uh, they, they take a bit of time. Just a number. All righty, thanks, Tiffany. Awesome. Uh, one, Amita, okay, excellent. Uh, and are you finding the feedback useful when you submit your uh, assignment or when you've not assignment, your ICE task? There is a little document that sort of pops up and becomes available that you can download, which is sort of a, what I call a uh, quote unquote model answer. Uh, and it sort of just gives you a bit of a breakdown in terms of what, uh, what the answer should look like. Uh, but again, all of you have different uh, yeah, the different approaches to that. Uh, anyone else? Uh, let me just see who else is online. We've got uh, Jenna, we've got Bootle, we've got Amita, we've got Matthew. Um, any feedback from you guys? Anything that you, in terms of the iStars, are you finding the iStars at the moment? All righty, thank you very much, Jenna. Great, thank you very much, Butli. Uh, Butli, it's all about how you approach it. If you use it as an opportunity to prepare for the exam by summarizing the chapter and by adding uh, quite substantial uh, content to your answers, then it's definitely a useful tool. But for the ICE task itself, for the submission, uh, as I said, it shouldn't be longer than a page, a page and a half. 
uh, bullet points only. Uh, and if you do insert any uh, anything outside of the textbook, you can maybe just note where that source is, but you don't even need to reference it. So um, if you're using it for preparation for the exam, then absolutely it is a great tool to be able to use that because it uh, almost uh, gives an opportunity to um, to summarize and 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 pull out the key points. Chapter. All right. Thank you very much for that feedback. So let me have a look and see. Um, so that's really the run up until until the assignment is due. So we are sort of sitting in week six, and we're moving towards the assignment due date, which is in May. As I said, the NSS or the national. Um, support session, which will be run by Dr. Uh, Hini. Uh, he will run that session for you and take you through the assignment. So our session for this evening, I wanted to touch on the assignment again. Uh, I know I did went through it quite extensively the first time, but let's, uh, let's touch on it again. So before, let me pull it up. So there it is. So what I want to do is just sort of give you an opportunity to ask some questions about the assignment. Uh, and you can switch your microphone on. You can interact on the chat side. Uh, so let me, let me know, um, is there anything, if any of you have started on it, uh, and uh, is there anything that you sort of have questions on? All right, I'll give you a moment. All right. Uh, it doesn't uh, feel like you guys want to engage this evening, so I'm not altogether sure whether you guys just want to sit back and uh, and relax. Uh, but I really need some indication from you. Um, how are you finding the assignment? If you have not started with the assignment, that's also okay. There is absolutely nothing wrong with it. Uh, if you have not looked at the assignment yet, that's also okay. It's only due in May, and there might be other things that you guys are submitting. I know that research is quite a lot of work, and I do know that will is quite a lot of work, and I know that some of you guys are um, doing other courses as well. So I fully understand if you have not started on it yet or even looked at it yet. So, so saying that, um, the assignment is in, is in the form of a report. Um, it should contain, right. No, no problem. Uh, nothing at all, Stephanie. Uh, yeah, as I mentioned, research is, it takes a lot of, dare I say it, research. <laughs> it is quite time consuming. Uh, it's not difficult, it just, it takes a lot of time. Uh, so I fully understand. Uh, and, and as I said at the opening of, of the session, you guys, you guys are old hands at this. You, you know how to pace yourself. You know how to um, structure your studies. You know how to be disciplined when it needs to be. So I'm not terribly worried that you have not started with the assignment yet. So what I'm going to do, if uh, I'm going to touch on a couple of things in a few of the um, chapters as they relate to the assignment. Uh, and so I'm not going to go through the assignment verbatim like I did the last time because you can have a listen to the first uh, to the session in the first um, our session that's already available for you. So let's have a look. So um, question question number one relates to the five P's. So let me pull up uh, chapter one 
and let's go to that specific area of of the chapter. Uh, let me just pull it up for you quickly. Um, strategy definitions, historical, the nature and role of strategy. There we go. So Munzberg, in his uh, in his research, uh, he came up with this idea uh, of how does one how does one look at strategy? How does one review strategy? How does one um, what's the word I'm looking for? How do companies approach strategy? So he, he did a bit of research and he looked at it and he came up with this, this five piece framework. And he could categorize every company that he looked at in terms of these five P's in how they approach strategy and how they approach strategy development, how they approach uh, strategy execution. Remember in the first in the session that we had previously, I mentioned that there's in your textbook and as you're busy doing this course, there's really two things that you need to hold on to. The one thing is the strategic management process. So strategic management or the management of strategy is a process. It starts off with identifying your, your strategic objectives, your strategic intent, actually, and then that converts into a vision, that converts into a mission statement. Your mission statement then uh, develops a set of strategic objectives, uh, organizational values. Uh, you then uh, do a, a full analysis of the external environment uh, and internal environment, and based on your strengths and your weaknesses, what's happening in the vessel environment, in the macro environment, what's happening in the uh, industry environment where we use port as five forces. So based on all of that research, you will then devise a strategy in which you will then execute that strategy. So that, that's the strategic, and, and with that comes things like change management, with that comes strategic leadership, uh, and with that comes organizational alignment. So all of these are different chapters that we'll be doing over this year. So that's the strategic and management process. So that's the management of strategy. Then there are actual strategies. So the actual strategies we will be touching on in the second semester when we were looking at um, Porter's low cost strategies. We'll be looking at um, Mayborn's blue ocean, red ocean strategies. We'll be looking at a uh, uh, strategy for global competitiveness. Uh, we'll be looking again at Porter and his uh, diamond of international of national competitiveness. Uh, and then we look at uh, different strategies for innovation. So those are the actual strategies that an organization can choose from in order to execute their strategy in order to outperform, outwit, outplan, out um, perform their competitors within or within within the industry. Um, or their, their closest competitors, or gain a competitive advantage, or deliver value for their shareholders. So always, as, you, as you're as working through these chapters, always take hold of those two elements. At, at the moment, you're learning about the strategic management process. And this will continue right through until second semester. So the whole first semester is all about defining strategy, chapter one. Chapter two is about uh, understanding a value uh, and what does that mean, or sustainability. Uh, chapter three is about strategic direction. Chapter four gives you the tools in order to analyze the environment. Five, six, and seven is an analysis of the environment using those tools that you were introduced to in chapter four. If you go into second semester, it starts off with business level strategy. So now the options are there. You've done the analysis of the environment. Now the options are there. At the business level, what do you choose? Low cost, a differentiation of focus strategy. Uh, in terms of your innovation strategy, what are they? What are the, uh, innovation at the bottom of the pyramid, value innovation, uh, red ocean, blue ocean strategies, 
and so forth. If you are looking at expanding your business and you want to move outside of your local market, how you can expand into international markets. So there's a list of strategies there. Uh, then you have corporate level strategies. So business level uh, is at a much lower level and that is where you compete within the, um, within the market. But at a corporate level, that is you, when you look at your portfolio of businesses, how do you structure that portfolio of businesses in order to attain a lasting and sustainable strategy over time? So those are your corporate level strategies. Now you've got three chapters of, of possible, chap or possible um, strategies you can choose from. One at a business level, one in terms of innovation, and one at a corporate level. Then you come back to the strategic management process in which, uh, oh yes, and then also international competition. So you've got, you got literally four chapters of strategies to choose from. Now you move it back to the, um, to the management process and it starts off with, uh, um, with organizational leadership or strategic leadership, who is going to lead those changes and the strategy, and then it ends off with organization alignment. How do you align culture, business, processes, structure in your organization in order to best uh, build a sustainable business over time? So, so hold on to, on to that sort of picture in your mind um, throughout the year that what you're actually doing is understanding and getting to know the strategic management process. And then you also learn about the handful of business level, innovation, corporate level, global strategies, which you can then choose from in order to gain competitiveness or build a lasting and sustainable business. Back to Minsberg, Minsberg's five Ps. Minsberg uh, pretty much uh, had this idea that each company, each business, each firm approaches strategy differently. And he developed this framework to best explain it. So the first one is a plan. When an organization approaches strategy as a plan, it's a very thorough, thought out um, perspective uh, it is uh, top down, it is structured, formulated, it's a very rational analysis uh, and it matches the internal capabilities with the external opportunities. Internal capabilities, actually that's chapter seven, there's a whole bunch of capabilities uh, and then opportunities uh, comes from your macro and your industry analysis. So it's a very much a, a standard sort of here's an opportunity, here's my capabilities, let me match it. So an example would be how does Apple match the internal capabilities with the external opportunities? So the external opportunities was, um, was tablets. They were very good at making phones. A tablet is just a phone that is much bigger. So they use the same capability of making a brilliant phone into making a brilliant tablet. They were not the first ones that made a tablet, but they definitely define the tablet market with the iPad. So that is a good example of matching the internal capability with an external process. Position is slightly different. A determination of products and their position in external competitive environment. The position is really taking my product and now let me go out into the environment and go and have a look and see where I can find opportunities to sell my product too. So it's very much an outside in approach. It's very much determined by the opportunities that they are externally, uh, who the customer is externally. Perspective, again, very different approach to strategy. Perspective is about um, adapting past strategies based on a collective experience and the way of doing things. It's a product of minds and ideologies of individuals, groups, and management. The strategic link between organization and competitive envir environment is determined by how management interpret the internal resources and capabilities. Microsoft is a very good idea and a very good example of a company that follows a perspective approach to strategy. It bases its products and its uh, um, product launches around a specific idea, around a specific um, concept of who the customer is. 
and then they structure the strategies around that. Much slow, a lot slower in execution, but when they execute generally, they execute well and they get the market share that comes with it. Ploy is a lot more short term in nature, by its very nature. Ploy is about trying to outmaneuver and outwit your competitor. Outmaneuver and outwit simply means trying to uh, sort of um, move in one direction and you faint in that direction. Your computer thinks, oh, no, they're going in that direction and then you're moving into another. So it's, it's, it's almost like um, if we should say that a company like Volkswagen uh, believes that, um, that Toyota, which is their biggest competitor, is going to launch a, a hydrogen mass market vehicle. And they are looking at it definitely. And then what they do is they then release a whole lot of images and they release a whole lot of leaks around the development of hydrogen vehicles and how it was not successful and they're canceling the launch and all of this, all to give um, Toyota a sort of a, 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 I won't say false information. And this actually happened in which uh, both was working, Toyota, uh, Volkswagen through, uh, through his BMW partnership uh, was working on hydrogen and they've been working on hydrogen for very, very long. Um, and so has Toyota, uh, as opposed to battery and um, electric vehicles. So it's, it's quite interesting that, that only Toyota has come into the market and it has very low uptake on it. Pattern is just the consistent behavior over time, intended strategy, which means that discovery follows the same recipe over and over and over again, the way they expand their business. They started off with healthcare, they moved into insurance, life insurance, then they moved into short-term insurance, and then they moved into asset management, and then finally they moved into banking. The question is, how are they going to expand their business further from here? But a very deliberate, very intended strategy that has a pattern. Each one of those extensions, or both, not bolts on, but each one of those extensions to their business was very specific and well thought out. So that's really the five P's. Uh, is there any comments on that or any, uh, yeah, is there any comments on that? Or questions. All right. Thank you very much, Bootle. Excellent. Thanks, Tiffany. All right, let's have a look at uh, shared value and inclusive business. So this, this sits in uh, chapter two. Um, for this, please make sure that you read the article, the original article that I um, uploaded for you. It's available uh, for you to have a read. Uh, and it is important that you uh, that you read the original article around shared value and inclusive business. Um, all right. I know that um, Low and Fenter does break it down uh, quite well, uh, but uh, sort of reading it from the horse's mouth would uh, would would benefit you. Shareholders versus stakeholders, uh, dynamic business context, context as opportunity, bottom of the pyramid, embedding context into strategy. Measuring and reporting on progress, integrated scorecard. All 
but uh, I'm just trying to find a way in the notes. Uh, I know it's here somewhere. All right, sorry about that, guys. Um, Let's go back to the question again. Uh, so the question is asking, uh, provide a brief introduction of shared value and inclusive business. Uh, you have the article, uh, discuss um, how you can utilize shared value inclusive business to embed context into strategy and evaluate the extent to which Rx Salt is implementing shared value uh, and exclusive business. So if you listen to uh, my recording that I did uh, previously around um, around this, uh, what I'm looking for is really a, a critical review. So on the one side, you give me the theory, but really a critical review is, here's the theory, step one, here's my evaluation. So evaluation is essentially just, are they or are they not? That's what the evaluation is. Are they or are they not? So that's step three. Step two. Step three really is, should they? Should they? Should they have to embed uh, inclusive business into their strategy? Should they have uh, shared value and inclusive business as part of their uh, strategy? Should they? And then you have an answer there. Yes or no? And then the fourth part of the answer really then is the critical sort of um, response to that. So yes, they should. Why? Yes, they shouldn't. They don't have to. Why? So both of those will give an opportunity then to then give the alternative viewpoint. If you believe that they should embed um, shared value and inclusive business in their strategy, it should be baked into their very business, into their culture, the way they do stuff, the way they do things. Then the question is, um, should they? Should they do it? Uh, and if the answer is yes, then why? Why should they do it? Why should they, this small company that operates um, with very few employees, uh, why should they tell the market, why should they tell their consumers that they are this great company that has all of these amazing things that they do for the community and so forth and so forth. Ultimately, what you want to know is the real sort of um, base question, which is, does this lead to increase revenue? Does this lead to increase market share? Does this lead to increase brand value? And that's a tough question to answer because according to Porter and Kramer, when they wrote that article, it should never be about in, in, improved margins, increased revenue, improved, uh, increased brand value. It should be because it is the right thing to do. Now that is an interesting viewpoint because there's alternative viewpoints that says that businesses should not be expected to do the work of other agencies, um, NGOs, government. They are there to create value for their stakeholders through employment of employees, through relationships with suppliers, a revenue for their shareholders, and ultimately taxes for government. And through them paying their corporate tax, governments should then redistribute the tax in such a way to provide for just and equitable society. It is not the role of organizations in business to provide for just and equitable society. So that's the tension that's inherent in this idea and concept of shared value and inclusive business. And that is what I want you to hold on to while you're working through this answer. It's a third of your question, it's a third of your paper, it's a third of your assignment. 
uh, and and I'm really looking for this is if you answer this question well, this is what's going to set you apart from getting a distinction for this assignment, or just an average mark. It is really lies in this question. Any comments on that? All right, mission statements, mission statements. Um, mission statements, mission is putting the vision into action. So if you look at strategic, if you look at this chapter, it sort of starts off with this, um, with this graphic. Um, Stephanie, that's exactly what I'm saying. That's exactly. Obviously, the theory, I mean, the theory should be a part of the answer, and the theory, I think, accounts for about 40% of the answer. So your ability to to write out the theory in a cogent way, uh, in a very uh, sort of uh, summarized form, because you're, well, you're very much sort of um, limited by your word count. The question is, um, how do you, the constraint, the word count constraint, how do you put all of what I just said all of that, <laughs> how do you put it into a very limited word count? Make sense? Uh, question three deals with uh, strategic direction. Yep, absolutely. And that is what makes this assignment so interesting. And the second assignment for that. Well, the second assignment is a bit more straightforward. Uh, this one, because of this one question, does make it uh, quite interesting, an interesting challenge. But that's that's what third year is all about. You know, if it was easy, it wouldn't be third year. So if we look at this graphic, you'll see how the interaction between strategic intent, vision, mission and values it's not the con well it is a sequential process because strategic intent really is that overall overarching sort of thing that drives organizations in a certain direction so a simple idea is something like google so google says that their strategic intent is to organize the world's information. Simple. But in there, that is such a multi-layered thing. The world's organization, the world's information. So that includes websites, that includes all kinds of information. So that includes information from libraries, books that are published, songs, videos. Do those count as information? Well, according to Google, it does. YouTube, YouTube music. So strategic intent is really that one thing that drives an organization in a certain direction. The vision makes it a bit clearer. The vision sort of um, gives it a name almost, so to speak. And then a, a mission is, is really the train tracks that the organization sits on. And the train tracks is what, what moves the organization um, forward. The values are the lifeblood. It's the things that drive behavior in the organization. If the business does not have a single clearly defined set of values, then people don't know how to behave. So when one then looks at the vision, at the mission statement in isolation, one always needs to consider what the vision is. So let me get there quickly. So that's vision statements. 
and mission statements. So, so mission statements, how do you know whether a mission statement has is a good mission statement? Some would say it's very subjective, meaning that um, if it feels good, then it's okay. Short and sweet. Uh, some say that it should be uh, extensive. So when somebody reads the mission, then they know exactly what the business is about, why the business exists, what's its economic goals, uh, what's its self-concept, what's competencies, its competitive advantage, what do what customers does it serve, how does it view its responsibilities to what stakeholders. Very comprehensive. It covers all of those issues. If it covers all of that, now the question: If it covers all of that, then it might be too long. It might be too long. Although there are some companies that manage to fit all of this in to a couple of words. They manage to fit all of that in to a couple of words. So it does take a bit of time to perfect it if you want all of these elements in it in order to to say in order to you know um, in order to say what you want it to say so so let's have a look uh, here is a let's have a look at McDonald's's mission statement So this is McDonald's mission statement. But McDonald's mission statement is, is prefaced by its purpose statement. So the purpose statement would then be something like the strategic intent. Now, if you look closely at the purpose statement, it has quite a bit in it, just in those few words. to feed and foster communities. I mean, literally like a few words can mean so much if you start unpacking it. Have a look at the mission statement to make delicious, feel good moments easy for everyone. So what type of, what type of business, what is its economic goals? Why is this organization in business? To make feel good moments. We don't know what those feel good moments are, if it's McDonald's, it is feel-good moments around eating McDonald's food. What are its economic goals? It's not entirely clear. But if you say easy for everyone, you are most probably looking at uh, a market share that spans the globe. So what is its economic, economic goals? In every single country on Earth. Simple. For McDonald's, that's simple. What is your operating philosophy in terms of quality, organizational image, and self-concept? Delicious. Delicious. We can unpack delicious. Is delicious healthy? Is delicious good? We don't know how they unpack it, uh, but one can assume. What are the core competencies and competitive advantage? Mm, not entirely clear. Easy for everyone. That could be a competitive advantage. Uh, and that definitely is a competitive advantage. McDonald's supply chain is the best in the world. Their ability to make a product that tastes like crap everywhere around the world is their magic power, which means that they must have a supply chain that backs that up. What, what customers do and, and, and can we serve? They say everyone, literally everyone on earth. They want to be the economic goals is on every, in being every single country on earth. 
be within walking distance of every child within on earth, and it is everyone. How do we view our responsibilities to our stakeholders? Um, that's not that's not entirely clear. But then again, the, the purpose statement does talk about foster communities hmm? to feed and foster communities. So here's an example of a mission statement that contains, if you stretch out the meaning of these words, it can mean all of these things. If you stretch out the meaning of these words. So when one looks at mission statements, um, there's always this tension between being short enough so that everybody in the organization can remember it and being long enough to include everything that it needs to include in order to best describe the business and to best give the business those rail tracks that the business runs on to move forward. All right. Are there any other questions on the assignment? Are there any other questions on ICE tasks? Are there any questions just generally? I'll give you guys a moment to formulate that. You can either type it or you can um, you can speak as well if you want to. All right, excellent. Thank you, Ethan. All right, I think it's a late night, I think, for you guys, um, as well as for me. So thank you very much for those that took the time. Uh, thank you very much, Jenna. Uh, thank you very much for those that took the time to connect with me this evening. The session is recorded, so you can go back to listen to it. Uh, and as always, uh, we've got the WhatsApp group that you can access if you've got questions and also... Uh, you can email me as well. Um, so, guys, thank you very much for the evening. I do have a request from you before you leave. Can you please put your most creative emoji in the comment section, and then you can leave via the door. Excellent. Thank you very much, Bootling.